Hello, my name is Carrie Brown and I'm with the Central Mississippi Regional Library System. Today, I'm going to be reading to you chapters 5, 6, and 7 of A to Z Mysteries, The Haunted Hotel. Written by Ron Roy, illustrated by John Stephen Gurney, published by Random House, New York. Chapter 5 Josh and Ruth Rose stared at Dink. Honest, Dink said. But why? Ruth Rose asked. Since the hotel is almost empty, he said we'd be doing him a favor, Dink said. If people see us here, they might think the ghost was just a joke. Let's do it, Josh said. I need a night away from the twins. Dink grinned. Mr. Spivitz invited our families, too. And he wants us to investigate the ghost while we're here. Josh laughed. When my little brothers get here, that ghost better watch out. By supper time, it was all arranged. The three families would spend the night at the Shangri-La. Ruth Rose's little brother, Nate, wanted to meet the ghost. He'll be my friend, Nate said. We can play with my dinosaurs together. Dink's family and Ruth Rose's family rode together in one car. The Pinto's car was already in the parking lot when they arrived. Josh was holding on to his twin brothers, Brian and Bradley. The boys hugged twin teddy bears. After locking the cars, all 12 of them trooped into the Shangri-La. Mr. and Mrs. Spivitz were waiting in the lobby. They were all dressed up as if it was a special occasion. Good evening, all, Mr. Spivitz said. Welcome to the Shangri-La. The adults shook hands. It's very nice of you. Dink's mom told them. Mrs. Spivett smiled at the kids. It's the least we can do. These three detectives are going to get to the bottom of this ghost business tonight. Dink's father grinned. As long as they do it before bedtime. Dad, Dink said, rolling his eyes. Just then, Mr. Linkletter joined them. Where's Casper? Nate asked him. I want to see the ghost. Mr. Linkletter blinked at Nate then handed room keys to Dink, Josh, and Ruth Rose. I think you'll find the rooms comfortable, he said. I had roll-away beds brought in for the little ones. Dink led them all to the elevator. What number do you guys have? Josh asked. We're in room 203. I'm across the hall, Ruth Rose said, in 204. Me too, Dink said, 202. Five minutes later, all three families were in their rooms. Dink dumped his backpack on a narrow rollaway bed. The room was pretty big, with a color TV and a miniature refrigerator. Dink opened the door and found a bunch of soft drinks and snacks. Can we eat this stuff? Dink asked. His father gave him a look. You just finished supper, Dinko. Dink grinned. Yeah, I know. How late can I stay up? Nine o'clock, his mother said. Remember, tomorrow is Monday. Mom! Tomorrow's Columbus Day, Dink said, grinning. No school. Okay, 10 o'clock, but not a minute later. Dink left the room and knocked on Josh's door. Come in, one of the twins yelled. Dink opened the door. The Pinto's room was even bigger than his. Three small beds were lined up opposite one big one. Brian and Bradley wore matching Batman jammies and were coloring in their coloring books. Josh was standing in front of their little fridge, tossing down peanuts. Can Josh come out and play? Dink said, grinning. Josh's dad said, sure, just be back by breakfast time. Josh laughed. Let's get Ruth Rose, he said to Dink. They walked to room 204 and knocked. Ruth Rose opened the door and stepped out. My folks are trying to get Nate to go to bed, she whispered. Let's go down to the lobby and think of a plan, Dink suggested. I already have one. Ruth Rose announced. You do? Dink said. Ruth Rose nodded. Mr. Linkletter told us the ghost showed up at midnight, right? Mr. and Mrs. Jeffers said the same thing. Josh snorted. So what's your plan? To hang out and say hi to the ghost when the clock strikes 12? Ruth Rose grinned. Exactly. Chapter 6 It smells awful in here, Josh muttered. Josh, this closet is filled with cleaning stuff, Dink told him. It's supposed to smell awful. Could you guys whisper, Ruth Rose said. You want our parents to wake up and find us gone? It was nearly midnight. 
Ten minutes before, the kids had snuck out of their rooms and hidden in the closet. Josh yawned. I should be asleep, having a great dream, he said. Instead, I'm squashed in here like a sardine waiting for a dumb ghost who isn't even real. Dink grinned in the dark. I heard that ghosts hate kids with red hair, he whispered. Yeah, well, I heard that ghosts eat blonde-haired kids for breakfast. Suddenly, Ruth Rose put out both hands. Shh! I think I heard something, she said. Josh snorted. Nice try, Ruth Rose, but shh, whispered Dink. I heard something, too. He pushed the closet door open a crack. All three kids peered out into the hallway. Dink heard a groan like the wind howling through a cave. Suddenly, a tall white figure appeared at the end of the hall. It gave off a shimmery white light and seemed to float above the floor. Oh, my gosh, Josh croaked. I want to go back to bed. The ghost wore a long white gown. Its hair was white and stuck up in spikes, and there were just black, empty holes where the eyes should have been. Josh grabbed Dink's arm. It hurt, but Dink was too scared to say anything. The figure drifted slowly toward the kid's hiding place. It was carrying a long silver sword. It knows we're in here, Josh squeaked. The ghost paused at each door, then stopped in front of room 202. That's our room, Dink thought. Dink, the ghost moaned. Go home. This place is dangerous. Every hair on Dink's head stood up. He felt cold as if someone had opened a window. The ghost floated to the next room. This time it moaned, Josh, go home. Leave before it's too late. Outside room 204, the ghost moaned its final message. Ruth Rose, take your family and leave now. Then the ghost drifted back the way it had come. Seconds later, the hallway was empty. Ruth Rose jumped up and shoved the door open. Come on, let's see where it went, she said. Who cares where it went? Josh said, I'm out of here. Come on, Josh, Dink said. I promised Mr. and Mrs. Spivitz we'd get rid of the ghost. And we only have till morning. But what if it gets rid of us instead? Dink grabbed Josh's arm and started down the hall. He stopped and listened at room 202. He heard his father snoring and grinned. Suddenly, Josh stuck his nose in the air. What's that smell? He said. Dink shrugged and kept walking. Ruth Rose had reached at the end of the hall. It disappeared, she said, when they were standing together. I smell it here, too, Josh said. Smell what? Ruth Rose asked. I don't know, Josh said, but it reminds me of something. Around the corner, the kids found a gray metal door. A red sign on the door read fire exit. Maybe it went through there, Ruth Rose whispered, pointing at the door. Dink held his breath and slowly pushed the door open. The kids peered into the stairwell. They saw dark steps going up and down. Should we split up and check it out? Dink asked. No way, Josh said. We stick together. Dink grinned at his friend. Still think the ghost is a joke? Josh made a face at Dink. Guys, Ruth Rose said. How did the ghost know our names and which rooms we were in? Maybe it has supernatural powers, Josh said. Or maybe the ghost is really someone in the hotel, Dink added. Someone who knows us. Ruth Rose nodded. I think the ghost came out tonight looking just for us. You mean to scare us away like it did the other people, Dink asked. Ruth Rose nodded again. Well, it worked, Josh said. Let's hit the trail. Hey, what's this? Ruth Rose asked. She picked up a white hair off the door frame. Dink examined the hair. The ghost had white hair like this, he said. Yeah, Ruth Rose said. But ghosts don't lose hair. People do. Suddenly, the door to room 204 opened. Ruth Rose's father popped his head out. Okay, you guys, time to hit the sack. But Dad, we just... Ruth Rose said. Her father shook his head. Say good night to the boys, Ruth Rose. Now. 
Chapter 7 By nine the next morning, the three families were down in the lobby. Ruth Rose's parents had treated them all to breakfast at Ellie's diner. Then they'd walked back to the hotel for their luggage. While the adults thanked Mr. Linkletter and the Spivitzes, the kids huddled on the sofa. "'What are we going to do?' Dink asked. "'Mr. and Mrs. Spivitz are selling the hotel today.' Ruth Rose pulled the white hair from her pocket. "'This proves that someone is just pretending to be the ghost,' she said. "'But we don't know who or why.' "'Maybe one of the guests has white hair,' Josh said. "'Josh, all of the guests are gone except Mr. and Mrs. Jeffers, "'and they both have dark hair,' Ruth Rose reminded him. "'Could the hair be from a wig?' Dink asked. "'The ghost could have been wearing a costume and makeup.' "'That's it!' Josh cried. Last night I smelled makeup in the hall. I remember the yucky smell from last Halloween. Just then, Mr. Linkletter walked over to the kids. He looked even more unhappy than he had the day before. This is a sad day, Mr. Linkletter said. Each rail and rook will be here at noon with the papers. Noon! Ruth Rose jumped up. Then we still have three hours. Mr. Linkletter gazed down at her. I'm afraid it's too late. He shook his head and walked away. We have to find out who's pretending to be the ghost, Ruth Rose said. If we don't, Livy and Mr. Linkletter will lose their jobs. And Mr. and Mrs. Spivitz will lose their home, Dink added. Guys, I think I know who the ghost is, Josh said. Dink and Ruth Rose stared at him. Well, Dink said, who? The only people left in the hotel are Livy, Mr. Linkletter, and his aunt and uncle, right? Right, Ruth Rose said. And we know that none of them want the hotel to be torn down, Josh continued. You forgot about Mr. and Mrs. Jeffers, Dink said. They're still here. Josh grinned. Bingo. The Jefferses? Ruth Rose said. But they said they saw the ghost outside their room. Sure they saw the ghost. Josh said. One of them is the ghost. I know how we can find out, Dink said. We have to search their room. Mr. Linkletter will never let us do that, Josh said. Well, maybe he won't let us, but I know someone who might, Ruth Rose said. Who? asked Dink. Livy. The kids said goodbye to their families, then hurried to the door that led to the basement. They found Livy in a cozy room drinking a cup of tea. She was wearing her maid's uniform. Morning, kids, she said. What brings you down here? We saw the ghost last night, Ruth Rose said. Livy's eyes widened. Really? Where? Tell me. The kids explained about spending the night in the hotel and hiding in the cleaning closet. It was so creepy, Josh said. First, we heard all these weird noises. Then this thing came out of nowhere. It glowed, Ruth Rose said. She showed Livy the white hair. And we found this. We think the ghost is one of the guests wearing a costume and wig, Dink explained. Suddenly, Livy let out a gasp. It was a wig, she cried. What was? Ruth Rose asked. I just remembered, Livy said. Yesterday, I was in 301 getting ready to vacuum. When I looked under the bed for shoes and stuff, I saw this hairy white thing. I thought it was a rat. But it could have been a white wig. Who's in room 301? Dink asked. Livy shrugged. I don't know their name, but they're a nice couple from New York. Could you let us in so we could check the room for clues? Ruth Rose asked. Livy shook her head. Sorry, but you know how Mr. Linkletter is about the guest's privacy. But Mr. and Mrs. Spivitz hired us to get rid of the ghost, Dink said. Besides, if they have to sell the hotel, you and Mr. Linkletter will lose your jobs. And Mr. and Mrs. Spivitz will have to move, Ruth Rose added. Please, Livy, it won't take us long. Livy took a moment to think. Okay, she finally said, but just for two minutes. Hey, what's this? Josh had stuck his head into a small opening in one wall. That's an old dumbwaiter, Livy explained. In the old days, the hotel sent food up to the guests. Each room had one of these little elevator things. When the food got up there, the guests just opened a door and pulled out their food tray. Our room didn't have one, Dink said. None of them do anymore, Livy said. 
When the hotel closed its kitchen, the dumb waiters were all sealed up. She pointed to the one in her wall. That's the only hole left. Josh stuck his head back into the opening. Cool, this thing goes way up. Right, Livy explained. The shaft is still there, but the openings into the rooms were covered over. Josh yelled, hello, into the empty shaft. His voice came echoing back. Livy finished her tea. Okay, let's go, she said. I'll be glad when Mr. Linkletter is back to normal again. He's even grouchier than usual. Livy took the kids up to the third floor, then knocked at room 301. When no one answered, she unlocked the door and pushed it open. Please don't touch anything, she said. She knelt down and peeked under both beds. The wig's gone! The kids looked around the room. Maybe it's in the closet, Ruth Rose whispered. Livy pulled open the closet door. On the top shelf sat a plastic head wearing a spiky white wig. That's it, Josh said. Can you take it down? Dink asked. Livy carefully took the head down and set it on a table. Ruth Rose removed the white hair from her pocket and held it next to the wig. The hairs are the same, she said. Thank you. Be sure to tune in next week for chapters 8, 9, and 10. Goodbye.